Hello, 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 everyone. Mike Arnold here, co-founder of Pat Trading Partners, along with Bob Iacchino, here for your weekly sector overview with some other things thrown in. How is everyone doing today? Hope everyone has had a fantastic weekend. Quarter end coming up, so there could be some more window dressing moves. We saw a lot of them that the, this week with the rally and there's some cycles that are potentially going to start rolling over again so it's time to pay close attention to some of the positions by the way if you are new here please do consider subscribing ringing that bell and hitting the like button longer term subscribers please leave some comments and like the videos all right let's get to the other camera here there we go xle energy is in a cautious buy mode still long-term buy but there's no great bottoming signal just yet so i am being very cautious with this uh cycles could only get to the midpoint and they look to be possibly rolling over again now we are within the context from the lows back in december 21st we have pulled back between the key 50 and 62 and a half so i'm watching for support in here Major support would be back down at the 62 and a half, so that'd be 67.12. But anywhere in here, we could form a bottom position. Uh, we have a little divergence with the RSI on the daily. So you see lower low, higher low RSI. Uh, but that would just be a very aggressive buy signal, and there's a very aggressive buy signal on a daily close for the next two days only above uh, Thursday's high price of 74.26. Looking at the rotation zones, when it drops, you get the close below the rotation zone. And again, that 62.5, right with the 50-week exponential. And jumping back to the daily, you see that's with the 200 simple. So there is a lot of support down here, but could we fall more? Yes. So I'm not doing anything unless I get a stronger buy pattern or unless we get the close above Thursday's high. That's where we sit with XLE, but reminder, still in long-term buy mode. Real estate, nice snapback rally. Little double triggered. First, second targets hit. We still have a little gap and the third target hit. So cycles are getting to top and potentially gonna roll over. So this is definitely time if you've been playing stuff in the real estate sector to dramatically tighten up stocks. This was a pretty beat up sector since it tipped into sell mode and now getting that snapback rally you see here on the weekly filled that gap. So anywhere over, over the next few days, we could start rolling over again. We have this gap still left behind. That gap is to 42.17. And then if we did run above that, let me get over here again. Let me change the wrong one. There we go. If we get running up above that, I would target the breakdown area and the 50 EMA. And what do I mean by target these areas? Well, you can either take something off, lighten it up in this sector, or you can aggressively start moving up the stops. So that's the little key thing. If you're watching, again, remember for longer term viewers, you can keep brushing this up, but the key area on any pullbacks for a resumption of the long term trend would be a close below the 62.5. Now, as this makes new highs, remember you're going to have to move it on up. So that's where we sit. Just watch for these rollovers. Uh, Again, because they're in long-term sell modes. So when you get these vicious snapback rallies, just like back in 23rd of May week, you see in the financials, pretty strong snapback rally and then a rollover play. So could we have another pretty strong snapback rally and then a rollover play? That's exactly what I'm expecting. Cycles at the top on the daily for financials. So... Next little target is the end of the double and then the uh, close. The close is 3253 and you have a lot of topping area. And then you have the rotation zone about 3273. So this is where I'm looking to aggressively, aggressively move up stops on any long financial plays. If we did continue momentum, the next area I would not even target this close yet. I'd target this gap open, which would be about 33. It's the CC with the weekly, weekly, and I haven't pointed this out in the last couple, but with the weeklies rolling over, they could still have a long way to fall. 
once these daily cycles roll over. And nothing has systematically changed from a long-term position. So don't get caught up in the short-term moves. Short-term moves are playable, but you have to put them in context of the bigger still sell signals. XLK, still long-term sell signal. Short-term rally, filling the gap on the weekly. And the XLK, by the way, is technology. There was no double in this. So what targets do we use, when, especially when it breaks above this key little resistance base? We use the target of the closing price. Then we use somewhere around the rotation zone, which it went through on Friday. The next key area is just overhead and cycles also at the top. This could run a little more. This is close, closer to possibly running for another gap fill if we get another strong push Monday, Tuesday in this week. But as it gets later in the week, I'd really watch for this to roll over. So next key area I'd be using is this gap open price, 133.98, so essentially 144. And then this zone between this close, 136.33 to the 50, 137.62. And you see here, that just takes these moves back into the weekly rotation zone for another potential rotation back lower. XLI. And by the way, before I get an XLI, that's why I uh, think you should set up your charts. If you're trying to follow along with this, you can make some templates and you don't have to use them all the time. But when you're following along and setting up your charts to try to mimic what we do with our sector overview, you can uh, do it the same way. And I'll just go over the green line is always a 50 period exponential, blue line, 21 period exponential, uh, orange or yellow, whatever you want to call it, is eight period exponential. I go over these levels all the time with the doubles, so you can just tune into pretty much any video I have, or you can tune into a live stream and ask me what those are, but it's a 50% projection, 75 and 100% projection. Other things we use, the red is always a 200 simple, not exponential, simple. And then I use the harmonics, and I do have videos up on this channel about the harmonics also. XLI, still in long-term sell. There's no weekly gap yet to fill. There's still a weekly gap, but we're not close to filling it. So that's where we used to have a daily targets. It did make, since my video last week, this is why you should learn some of the patterns we do. This formed a double bottom and then triggered on Friday. And actually it had to be aggressive because it did not, I mean, it closed above it, but this would have to have been a more interday play. First and second targets hit. On a continued run-up, I'm watching for about 89.40 to 89.65 as the first target, and then about 90.13 to uh, 90.84 as a second target. Keep in mind, this is just returning. It's not even back to the weekly rotation zone, and you have a lot of overhead resistance right here with the breakdown zone. You see how it snapped back also off the 200 simple, but still in long-term sell pattern. XLY, consumer discretionary, does still have a longer term, double bottom. Nice little rally with the gap fill, but still in long-term sell mode. Weekly, not yet back to the weekly rotation zone. Daily, cycles at the top, but not yet rolled over. So if this has a little more room to run, uh, I'm watching for minor resistance about 148. Then I'd target this gap fill to 150.47. And if it continued higher than there, I'd be utilizing the 50, about 153.50 area. Just in context, that would just take it back into the weekly rotation zone without even potentially triggering this bigger double bottom. So I'd be watching for a rollover unless we got a weekly close above six, uh, above fifth, uh, sorry, above one fifty seven seventy. So keep in mind that these are still short term plays with end of quarter window dressing and the rally in the broad market from very oversold conditions. With, remember last week, we had the massive option expiration, which alleviated a lot of uh, positions overhanging the market. XLP, consumer staples, fill in the gap. Actually, this was very strong, uh, up about 5.84%. Not triggering a great pattern here. It did get an aggressive buy back on the 21st. 
and then there were some gaps left behind. This was a gap because this was the close. This was the open. Filling that gap, filling this gap. And now, next area I'm watching is a return to about 73.63 to 73.43. Also, cycles at the top, but not yet close to rolling over. This was a little late bloomer. And again, we can run this into the weekly rotation zone. So that's what I'm watching. I'll be watching closer to the end of the week for another rollover in this, in consumer staples. Uh, so that's where we sit with that. Let's see, XLV. Huge snapback rally in healthcare. Healthcare was really oversold. No reversal of that sell pattern yet longer term. And the targets were to gap fill when it started getting off of this thick key. We got an aggressive buy on the 21st of June. And now we're actually above the 62.5 on a daily closing basis. So we should try to... On continued strength this week, uh, at least try to make a run to the 200 simple again and the 87 half harmonic about 132.14. So that's what I will be watching for. Getting closer to oversold, overbought, and cycles at the top. So I'm giving this like the first couple days of the week for potential push higher before watching for a rollover play. So that's again tighten up stops aggressively on healthcare. Once the daily cycles start rolling over, XLB not I mean only up two uh, percent, so nothing spectacular there. This is when you start seeing stuff. I watch for the strongest sectors. By the way, this was not a double bottom and just coming up to the rotation zone. If we do continue higher, the major area I'm watching. You see, we have these dueling closes right here, uh, 77.86. Uh, cycles, this is is a, a weaker sector, uh, trying to get up here, but might be rolling over even before the top. So I'm still very cautious in the materials sector. And you see here, the it's in sell mode, and even on a continued rally, the major breakdown zone is 79.16. So then I'd be watching on anything else for a uh, rollover play in this daily rotation zone. So if you are long stuff, again, can't give specific advice, but my advice based off the position on a macro sense is you got to move up your stops pretty aggressively and prepare for a rollover in XLB. XLC communication services uh, sector is still in long-term sell, finally weekly filling this gap coming out of severely oversold condition, cycles at the top, Filling this gap back from the 10th of June on a continued push higher. My next area I'm watching is a 25% harmonic and this gap open coming in about 57.44. And if it managed to push higher than that, that would be the close. But really, this is getting aggressively moving up a stop about 57.44, preparing for another longer term rollover play. And you can see not even back to the weekly rotation zone. So if we did get above that uh, 57.44, about 58.32, 58.32 would take us just below this gap right here, gap fill, which is 58.34. So 58.32, 58.34 would be major resistance. I'd really start focusing on the next rollover play. XLU, remember, these are utilities. Utilities are very sensitive to interest rates, and we had a substantial 10-year interest rate pullback. So it got a very strong rally, still in sell mode, still in sell, but up 638 basis points. No double, but it did trigger on this close back on the 22nd. It triggered an aggressive buy coming in. Against the daily rotation zone, the flat 200. Uh, let me jump to the weekly real quick. This weekly breakdown zone, and if you want to fine tune it based off the daily price action, the next key breakdown zone would be about 7058. But I am getting cautious with the cycles getting to the top. This could be a little run more if it can get above about 6950 on a daily closing basis. My next target will be 7050. 7050 uh, would not take us back to a uh, buy signal. 
we need a weekly close back above the high from uh, the week of the 13th, which was 70.59 to get back into a longer term buy mode on that. XRT still in sell mode. Yes, there's a still a bigger potential double bottom pattern. We have a little snapback rally filling this gap right there. XRT, by the way, is a retail ETF. So filling this key gap, and now we do have one higher. Closing above the daily rotation zone right at the breakdown zone. The cycles are at the top, but not rolling over yet. So next key target to the upside would be about 65.85 and then 66.90 area. And I'd really start watching for the rollover play. So I'm getting more aggressive with stops with uh, uh, the retail, anything in the retail sector. Okay, like if you've been playing, there are Walmart plays. If you played, I, I, Amazon to me is a is still a substantial retail play, even though their their web services make their all their money. Because if you get a lot of consumer slowdown and business slowdown. Web services might not expand much, but hold their value. But uh, the retail area could really hurt. And they don't make a lot of money on retail at all. So you start getting a major slowdown. There could be major cutbacks with Amazon. But that's the kind of stuff. When I start seeing this roll over, if you've done an Amazon play, like let's just jump to those real quick. Like Amazon, you see here, triggered that double bottom. And run up. So this from just this play, you'd be taking profits. But if you were trying to eke a little more out and you didn't fully close out the position, it would be aggressively raise up a stop. Walmart. You, you come back up. There was aggressive buy here coming up against the daily rotation zone. So I don't really want to see a huge rollover in Walmart unless it can get a daily close above the 62 and a half. So those are how we're, you try to put in some macro and micro analysis together. IYT transportation, a uh, little snapback rally here, still in long-term sell mode. No major double bottoming pattern uh, coming up against the daily rotation zone. If it does make another push higher, and by the way, to this gap open, Remember, in order of significance, closing prices has the highest significance, followed by opening price. And then you look at highs and lows. So your two key data points that you should first and foremost watch, closing price and then opening price. That's why gap opens can be very important. And look where it gapped open to. Right at this breakdown area, tried to rally and then sold off. So now it's trying to get back above there. If it does get above this gap opening price in this breakdown zone, then I target the uh, closing price 224.15 to fill this gap. Cycles are getting at the top, not yet rolling over. So transportation stuff can also be moving up stops uh, fairly aggressively. DBC commodities. Remember, still in long-term buy, but coming off very overbought conditions and finally getting that pullback move. What does this mean? Back below the daily rotation zone, no great bottoming pattern just yet. Aggressive buy on a close for the next couple days, only above the uh, high price from Thursday. That would be 28.17, but that's against the daily rotation zone weekly you see can still pull back lower. So my major support is 2036, 2674. So I'm being very patient with the commodity sector. We could still get a slight little bounce and then another substantial rollover play before we put in at least a medium term bottom. Why also am I uh, cautious on DBC because of DBA? DBA still barely hanging on the long term buy mode, but triggering a double top pattern. All right. So agriculture, you see coming back down to that 200 simple and pausing. Now, there is an aggressive buy above Friday's high for Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday only. That would be above 2086 on a closing basis, and that would be a snapback, and I'd be watching again. This came to 62 and a half and barely closing below it, but on any snapback rallies, I'd be paying attention to about 2115, 
to about 2127 before we get another roll over play. Why? Because we've triggered this double. We have not even hit the first target yet. 20, 2047 with the weekly 50, then 2006, and this could easily tip into at least a longer term sell pattern before we get a more substantial bottom put in. So anything agriculture related, uh, it's either if it's triggered a sell signal, you know, it's get out. If it's not yet triggered a sell signal, it's aggress very aggressively moving up the stops. And this feeds into commodities because agriculture are a subset of commodities. That's why I'm also being very ca cautious with commodities. And also remember, we start off with energy, which is a major component of commodities. So advice, be careful with commodities until we get a longer term bottoming pattern. Semi, SMH, remember, we still have a long term sell signal and a long term uh, head and shoulder signal. Getting that snapback rally pretty weak on, I mean, this was a pretty weak sauce rally here. So I would not get overly excited with semis. You can see here on the daily basis, even if we uh, run up and fill this gap, and the gap fill would be about to 223.82, then my next target above that is 227.01. And this was not a strong a strong week. It was an up week, but not a strong up week. And by the way, this is not a double bottom. So you have a lot, even if it gets above the daily rotation zone, you have this as gap fill. So semiconductor plays are very short term plays only at getting to the top on the uh, daily rotation zone. So aggressively move up the stops with this could run slightly higher before the roll over, but I would not be chasing anything. If you are already long, raise stops to key levels. And if you get, if it hits targets in individual stocks and semis, I'd be unwinding those positions. GDX, we did have this potential. Uh, we, I mean, it still is in a long-term sell position. We had this potential double bottom, which is now invalidated. So I was watching to see if this could get some strength. It has not been able to get some strength. And that longer-term pattern off when we don't have a short-term pattern. The only thing that interests me is if we can get this back above $31, and I'll look for gold miners again. Other than that, it's hands off right now from my perspective. VTV, Vanguard Value, still in long-term sell with a snapback rally. Uh, again, we talked about this, and growth actually did better than value. Let's just take a look real quick. Remember, that's why I said to focus on mega caps and more junk growth. Value was up 4.47 on the week. Growth was up... Uh, 8.26. So the growth fund nearly out doubled the value fund. That's why I like to focus on things that can bounce more on these plays. Now, both will probably set up for rollover plays. Uh, daily cycles getting to the top, but not yet rolling over. So anything in growth, my next key area is about 135 to about 135.60. If we did get above there, so that gap left behind, my next target area would be a return to the weekly about 136.42 to 136.95. And then I'd really start targeting the rollover play. But based off this strong up move in value or this medium up move in value, you have a fair amount of overhead resistance. If the market starts rolling over towards quarter end, this will probably roll over pretty aggressively because a lot of value still isn't value yet. There's a lot of value that's way hot, too highly valued to, for my interest. Growth, we got the gap fill, still in long-term sell. Uh, no bombing pattern. There was an aggressive buy here that was triggered on the 21st of June. Running back up, back up up of the daily rotation zone. Next key area I'm talking is 237.80 and then on a continued run, 242.20. Cycles at the top and could roll over uh, especially Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday right before quarter end. So that's what I will be paying attention to. So growth 
it's move up stops very aggressively and if we personally get targets hit then you get out you get out of your uh aggressive growth from from our perspective that's where we stand pretty comprehensive uh snapback rally week again quarter end quarter end that's where if you just glance in case you can't watch it live if you glance here at the s p you see here cycles are in the top not yet over overbought but cycles are at the top so we can see some continued push higher in the s p through the beginning of the week nasdaq cycles at the top and getting a little weaker starting to roll over but not yet completely overbought and remember overbought's an area it doesn't necessarily have to hit some magic line but it's getting close so that's what i'm saying in your broad market you could start seeing some topping patterns uh going into quarter end so don't just get complacent and say you know you get quarter end window dressing but don't get complacent and just say hey this thing can just keep running to the moon and that's where we sit. I will talk to everyone later. Hope everyone is having a fantastic weekend. Bye for now.